for the next half hour, we're going to talk to Keith Ellison's Republican challenger, Chris Fields. Now, Chris, thanks for coming on again. We appreciate it. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate being here, as always. Uh, so you did some other radio <laughs> in the last couple couple people, days. People know who you are now. <laughs> yeah, how about that one? <laughs> right, what set, what who were you ever thought it, all right? Yeah. What, what are you known as now? Oh, my goodness. Tell me about it. Uh, Low life scumbag. Gunner well, Brawler. I've been called 21 year Marine veteran. Yeah, that's right. I've been called husband, father, combat veteran. And now I'm also uh, called 20. Uh, what is it? Low life scumbag. Low life scumbag. And, and gutter, gutter dweller. dweller. Gutter dweller. That's right. So well, they'll fit on the lawn sign. So a few days ago, you did a, a radio debate at KFAI with Congressman Ellison that got a little heated. Uh, tell us about, uh, from your perspective, uh, what led to it and what happened. Well, you know what? I had always intended uh, to challenge uh, Congressman Ellison on uh, what he spends his money on and how he takes his money in. Mm-hmm. And when we started talking about a particular issue uh, with regard to uh, some stuff that had been printed about my divorce that came out of the Minnesota DFL. Classy. It, we connected the dots, and uh, Congressman Ellison didn't like the way those dots were connected. And so... Uh, you know, he just kind of went off and, and the rest is history. And in fact, uh, Tom Hauser and Pat Kessler, mm-hmm. so that's WCCO and KSDP, yep. said that was the worst debate performance in Minnesota history. Oh, wow. Like, well, wow. Keith Ellison has never. And we have video of Oberstar. Right. <laughs> Keith, right. Keith Ellison has never had to pay attention to an, op- to an opponent. Uh, his district is quite blue. So are his constituents. <laughs> He's never had to pay attention to an opponent up to this point, and it has worked for him. Now, you have managed to uh, gain his attention, and apparently he can no longer uh, coast. It's very much like Obama's first debate. Mm-hmm. Well, he can't coast right. through it. He suddenly well, has to try because you have be not been completely off his game. Well, here, here's the thing, and this is uh, when we got into this race, we saw some things in his record that we didn't like. What we saw was the largest achievement gap between blacks and whites in education, and what we also saw was the largest unemployment gap between blacks and whites in the entire country. I mean, these two gaps are the worst in the entire country. And so our question was, why is this happening on Keith Ellison's watch? He's supposed to be a man of the people. And so we challenged that record, and, you know, apparently we poked the bear. The bear turned into a pinata, and all sorts of candy fell out. (laughs) Bit of honeys in there, <laughs> little fun size uh, butterfingers. So, uh, did did Congressman Ellison respond to those those very true allegations that his district has a huge disparity in terms of uh, race, education, and income? Well, you know what? You know, uh, uh, according to Congressman Ellison, he's focused, and you know, we just don't see it that way. What well, I if see, he's focused, he's doing a terrible job. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, how, how are you focused on jobs when every other day? Are you talking about Libya and Syria and all this other stuff? You know, and he did have an economic plan, and we presented uh, the congressman's economic plan. And he had, Is that uh, to, uh, with his $180,000 a year salary, only give his daughter $500 a month in child support? That whoa. economic plan? Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, but wow, you're a gutter drutter, Jack. Whatever. Yeah, I'll tell you Low-less what. scumbag. Uh, right. You know, Shoe fence. No, what we saw his economic plan is basically... More taxes, more regulations, and reparations for slavery. Wait, what? Come on now. No, yeah, exactly. Uh, reparations for slavery. He signed on to a bill uh, some time ago, H.R. 4, and that is to look into reparations for slavery. And I don't think that that's where the American people are, and I certainly don't think that's where your listeners are. Chris, what are you complaining about? You can score some money off of that. Yeah, but you know what? Most of us, 99% of us, are trying to move on. We understand the country had... A history. We're trying to move on. We're trying to live in a, uh, a colorblind society. My stepdad is white. My my wife is white. And so, as a matter of fact, recently it was just posted. One of his supporters called me an Uncle Tom. Oh, like, and I didn't really? understand that one. Cause, because what I'm talking about is how to help the minority community. Let me ask so you this. this. Is, just real quick. This yeah. is why I'm glad to be Eastern European. My four, My forefathers moved here after the Civil War, but... 
before the Nazis broke out. So well, my family avoided. I told that ben, to Ben. You to- took my line, line thief. But but I'll tell you what. You Maybe guys better have <laughs> document. You guys better have documentation because Ellison just may oh, try I'll and get, get my, some right. of your. I'll get my papers on so personal wealth. Let me know. ask you this: uh, with with Keith Ellison being a a black congressman mm-hmm. and using race as an issue with uh, the whole idea of of slave reparations, which frankly is a ridiculous idea, impossible to implement, and most folks are just not for it. Uh, he has used his race mm-hmm. as a political tool. You've he has. Out, you, and you have pointed out that he has failed ethnic minorities in CD5. And you, as as a black guy, how, how has that, one of his supporters called you Uncle Tom, what other reaction have you gotten from people being a black man challenging a black man who uses the fact that he's black as like his only campaign tool? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it makes for interesting theater, right? Uh, but when you come to the public uh, policy part of it, you know, I, I, when I looked at Congressman Ellison's record, this is what, this is who I saw. I saw Al Sharpton and Charlie Rangel. Sure. Okay. So uh, a couple of guys who, if their skin color were different, uh, they wouldn't have a job. Right. Okay. And that's who Congressman Ellison is. He, in 2006, he certainly was not the best Democrat no. th- there was. He wasn't the most qualified Democrat. He'd only been in the state house for four years. I mean, this is a guy who will use uh, his ra- his race and his religion uh, to his benefit. This, this is a profiteer or, or someone who takes advantage of a situation. And you know what? Be that as it may, if it was working, fine. Sure. But the fact of the matter is it's not working for all of us. It's not working for the constituents, and it seems that Keith Ellison is resigned and comfortable and happy about being a caricature. Safe seat. Yeah. And, and he's and he's okay being the being the caricature, being the the he really likes to, to be the Muslim congressman, one of the two, oh, but yeah. certainly the first. He's happy to have his 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 celebrity niche, but he is he is Well that's why he, how he got invited uh, to the uh, You know what? And, right. and that's but he's that's not doing the job point. for the people. That's a great point, Jack. Because I'll tell you what, right there was there. A, he's not for religious tolerance. Because throughout the whole campaign, when they were uh, the left, actually was trying to dog Mitt Romney for being a uh, Mormon, mm-hmm. and they were trying to throw that out there. Congressman Ellison didn't come to his defense. Right. You know, this is the guy who's supposed to be about religious tolerance. Mm-hmm. He didn't come to his defense with regard to you know uh, anyone's right to practice whatever faith they want. And when you looked at this show, what was the show on AS, ABC? GCB. It said for good Christian. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Right. Can you imagine if that was good Muslim? Right. You know, right. Where would Congressman Ellison be? I right. mean, holy smokes, he'd lead protests all over the place mm-hmm. and stuff like that. This guy isn't about religious freedom. Not at He's all. He's about his religious freedom. All right, let's take a let's take a break, and I want to get the your website out there because we want... We're in a position to win this seat, and I want people to uh, volunteer and contribute to the cause. Chris Fields for Congress dot com. That's Chris Fields for Congress dot com. Uh, one quick point before we go to break: uh, Congressman Ellison says he is focused on fixing the problems of the district. Either he is lying and he's enjoying the the celebrity of his his caricature and and his niche. Or he's not lying, and he's just flat out incompetent. He's Ooh. trying to fix it, and he he's, he's just simply can't. really awful at it. This is the late debate with Jack and Ben. We're talking to Chris Fields. Give us a call six five one nine eight nine five eight five five. We're broadcasting from the Pop Communications Studios. You're listening to Twin Cities News Talk AM eleven thirty and TwinCitiesNewsTalk dot com. All right, back on the late debate. We're talking to Chris Fields, <laughs> Republican challenger to uh, Democrat Congressman Keith Ellison. So you just had a, a radio debate where Keith Ellison lost his cool. And if I'm to believe the article, uh, both of you, it says here that uh, uh, Keith Ellison got angry at one point and stood up as if to uh, battle you physically, the 21-year veteran of the Marines. Well, like a program director had to get between you two or something. Now, That's what I heard. Yeah, and the article says well, you also stood up. No, actually, I was seated the whole time. And, and I just thought to myself, you know, if that guy gets out of his chair and proceeds towards me, he's going to have a very bad day. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a 21-year combat veteran, and I just retired. You know, not, uh-huh. not, 
a little more than a year ago. Like, yeah, and he's half my size. You know, so <laughs> it's like I, I was just kind of looking. How about I, you, I think he just kind of stayed uh, in his corner because I think he just realized, like, uh, yeah, that's just not going to be a very good move. Well, and, and the article said that he, his lip was uh, quivering in anger. How incredibly oh. unprofessional and juvenile to first get angry mm-hmm. and, and what? Uh, no, he hasn't got mean, a physical manifestation of that anger? No. What, are I we mean, in high school? I, mean, I just don't get where the anger comes from. This is the same guy who goes out there and says the Republican Party is a bunch of bigots. Like, uh, apparently, you know, this is the guy who wants to throw rocks at people's windows but, mm-hmm. you know, when it happens to him. Oh, God, you know. And so, now, uh, Congressman Ellison was smart to stay in his corner. And, and I would say this much. Um, we were supposed to have another debate on Tuesday. Supposed to? Uh, yeah, well, he backed out. What? Congressman Ellison cannot defend his record. Not only can he not you know, uh, maintain his bearing, his professionalism, he cannot defend his record. And you know where we're going to have that debate? We're going to have that debate at the Minneapolis Urban League, where he has an office. And so oh. what we said was, hey, you know, we'll come to your home turf. Nice. Okay? Because we have a plan to move everyone forward. Just put a a, a, a podium in front of his door, mm-hmm. and then whenever he wants to, you can just open it up and boom, podium, ready to <laughs> no. go for the debate. I mean, let's have the debate. If he's such a popular figure mm-hmm. in Minneapolis in the 5th Congressional District, why is he afraid to have this debate? Chris, uh, do you think the Green Bay Packers ever turned down the opportunity to play a home game? Absolutely not. Everybody everybody like, loves playing. I was going to say the Dome, but nobody likes playing. I don't know. Aaron Rodgers threw a couple of picks last week. We're going to take this week off and come back. No, I mean, nobody does that. Congressman Ellison can't defend his record. And, and you know what? That's I mean, amazing given, that he canceled. Uh, given his uh, comments, look, we're, we are close. Let me tell you what happened Guys, uh, after he made those uh, comments. Uh, we have 500, oh, over 500 uh, contributions come into our campaign. Nice. Thousands of people have written letters uh, to support us. Nice. Uh, this race is in play, and, and we do need a little bit of help. So we're asking your listeners to visit ChrisFieldsForCongress.com. ChrisFieldsForCongress.com. You can donate there, right? Yes, you can. There's the oh, absolutely. This website is awesome. Keith Ellison gravy train. And there's a well, picture of Keith Ellison in like a conductor. Out of it. Well, I mean, and, and part of that is, you know, our, our theory uh, of the race and our theory of Keith Ellison is, Look, this guy is bought and paid for by special interest. Absolutely. I mean, he would love to talk about himself being a fighter for the people. Mm-hmm. He's not a fighter for the people. No, he's bought and paid for. When you look at all of his money, over $600,000 comes from corporate PACs and big labor. No, I mean, I would, it's tough. I mean, I hold back the words and completely, you know, unraveling the guy, but. Uh, we well, want to have a professional discussion with him. It's, it, it, it seems that you have a better better uh, ab- ability to hold back uh, words than uh, <laughs> than the congressman does. Well, because I think a lot of people, and even your listeners, are looking for people to get along and work together. Congressman Ellison can't get along with anybody and, and work together. So you know, we're looking to completely change the dynamic in Washington, D.C., and the the way to do that is to get rid of the biggest obstacle to change, and that's Keith Ellison. Absolutely. Now, does uh, does Keith Ellison make it a habit of referring to veterans as low-life scumbags or gutter dwellers, or is it just you? Well, you know what? Uh, interesting you used to say that, Jack, because uh, before this, he started harping on, uh, you've never done anything for the North Side. It's like, well, what are you talking about? I was like, I was a veteran for 21 years. For 21 years, I served my my country, my community, and I did so in a way that, you know, would make uh, my community proud and any community proud. And so to say that veterans don't do anything for their local communities, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but we in the late debate look up to veterans. Maybe Keith Ellison doesn't. We respect the people who fought, the heroes. Yeah, but this guy, I mean, he just doesn't have that, that, that flavor. He has a different attitude. Unbelievable. Now, you do have one debate coming up that has already been taped, so Keith Ellison can't back out of it unless he builds a time machine. It'll be on KSTP, is uh, Oh, yeah, and I'll tell you what. And you know what? To, to put the 
you know, gutter dweller and the low life scumbags uh, comments that he made. And to put that in perspective, watch the debate on KSTP <laughs> because what you will see. Uh, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to. It's like this guy went to the Joe Biden School of Debate prep, <laughs> and, and I said as much. Like, hey, what are you doing, man? Like, you answered a question. Now let me answer a question. And he can't do that. I mean, he's just like a little chihuahua. Well, it's obvious what has happened to, to Keith Ellison. He has gotten a pass uh, for most elections up to this point just because the district has been so tough for a Republican to run in. You have managed to uh, definitely buck that trend, and you're doing great. But he's never been challenged, so he essentially, he is, he's the Gophers. <laughs> Everybody thinks everybody thinks it's very easy to to beat the the non conference teams. Then suddenly so you get easy a conference to beat, team. Easy to beat Syracuse. Yeah, exactly. And then you've got a real opponent, and it's not so easy anymore. And you are that real opponent. And frankly, uh, the emperor has no clothes on this one. And I think that's why no. he's reacting with violence. He has no record. He has he has nothing going on here. And so. You know, to, to challenge uh, Congressman Ellison, it, it wasn't very hard. When you look on his website, it's stale. It's got, you know, hey, I, I believe in helping people. Well, who doesn't believe in helping people? <laughs> wow. Going yeah. out on a limb there, Congressman. I'm going to help yeah. people. <laughs> I, I want to help people, too. And, and so we've built this coalition, this broad-based coalition, on this one idea that if all of us, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, if we all just come together – we can do great things. Well, you've got a great point that this isn't necessarily a, a partisan contest. Uh, mm -hmm. If if people who are, are certainly independents and even Democrats, if they want to see uh, CD5, Minneapolis, get better, mm -hmm. get rid of the guy who's the problem. Oh, and, and we make that point. Like, look, Congressman Ellison represents the status quo. You, you cannot build an economy and bring jobs back to the U.S. and to the 5th Congressional District on a platform that Congressman Ellison has. Right. And that is more taxes, more regulations, and reparations for slavery? Like, I mean, I don't even understand how we uh, how we sort through that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we want to do. Ben, uh, apparently you guys came here after the fact. Yeah, do we have to pay into this? We should, well, I, or do we, we should get I, Ellison I on. Oh, wait, he won't come on the show. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how he intends to do that. Because i got so, a budget to worry about. i right. got to know well, how much I'm spending. Well, he's going to bust your budget. Uh, yeah. He's, he's done that be before. Well, yeah. or, you know. in, in, in a lot of elections, you have candidates who, who legitimately support the interest of, of at, you know half the constituents or more than half the constituents. And, and the, the battle is between two ideologies. But essentially, Keith Ellison supports the interests of... Uh, some corporate PACs, some unions, mm -hmm. and his bosses in Congress like to trot him out when they need a black Muslim. Oh, yeah. But essentially, he does not support the interests or looking out for anybody in his own district. No, and that's right. Because what we know is that in 2000, let me tell you the brief uh, history of how he got there. In 2006, failed well, up. What happened in 2006? You got Bush and Cheney going around torturing Muslims and. and Gitmo, right? Abu, mm -hmm. And Abu Ghraib. And, and Abu Ghraib, yeah. right? And so you have this tremendous amount of of, of guilt, uh, maybe liberal guilt, maybe just the voters feel guilty. And what better way to stick it in Bush and Cheney's eye than to send Keith Ellison there? Mm. That's okay? right. And, and so, you know, now he's in a Democratic district. Well, no Democrat wants to challenge him in a primary. Right. No. Okay? Because that would be like stabbing Caesar. If you miss, you're done. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. While he, he's a sitting congressman. He can do a lot of damage. Okay, and so we're stuck with him. And what I'm telling your listeners and all the voters out there, we don't have to be stuck with him anymore. Yep. Okay, we can stand up and fight back. All right, absolutely. Chris Fields, thanks for joining us today. Good luck. We want to encourage folks to go to Chris Fields for Congress dot com and I'm gonna certainly watch that debate on KSDP. That's when good. is that on? Uh it's gonna be they're gonna preview four and a half minutes on Sunday. Check it out. Absolutely with KSTP with Tom Hauser. This is The Late Debate with Jack and Ben. Give us a call, 651-989-5855. We're broadcasting from the Pop Communications Studios. You're listening to Twin Cities News Talk, AM 1130 and TwinCitiesNewsTalk.com.